Hello, my name is Mira and I am a lore keeper in one of Yogg's last libraries. And today I wanted to talk about the Great Old One Atlak Naka. This a disclaimer, the Great Old One discussed in this video is arachnid in nature. Artistic renditions of spider-like entities will be displayed and spiders are discussed throughout the video. From one arachnophobe to another, viewer discretion is advised. Otlock Naka first appears in the 1934 short story The Seven Geases by Clark Ashton Smith. Many others, such as Brian Lumley and Lynn Carter, also used or referenced it in their work as well as expanded upon its mythos. It is alternatively called the Spider God or the Spinner in Darkness. The dark form ran toward him with incredible swiftness. When it came near, he saw that there was a kind of face on the squat Ebon body, low down amid the several jointed legs. The face peered up with a weird expression of doubt and inquiry, and terror crawled through the veins of the bold huntsman as he met the small, crafty eyes that were circled about with hair. Atlak Naka is thought to have come from Saturn with Sithagua. There are variations of the story where Atlak Naka actually spun a web bridge that connected Saturn and Earth so that Sithagua could arrive on the planet. Atlakanaka's true form is that of a giant arachnid with a human face, or at least a face that is capable of making human expressions. Sometimes it appears as a beautiful eight-armed woman, I assume to lure people to their deaths. <laughs> Atlakanaka was once the lord of the children of Atlakanaka, which were a race of arachnid creatures that existed during the Mesozoic era, but have since gone extinct. Those who have seen them claim they were similar in appearance to the purple spiders of Lane. It is said that some of Atlakanaka's Atlaknaka's priests have a ritual to bring the fossils of such creatures back to life. Atlaknaka also has the power to control all spiders. As of 2017, there are around 3 million spiders to every human on planet Earth. There's a terrifying study on this that is linked in the description if you want to read about how spiders could literally just eat the human race out of existence if they felt like it. Just nightmare fuel. Anyway, Nowadays, Atlaknaka is served by the spider-like species known as the Grey Weavers, which were created by Lynn Carter in 1980. Grey Weavers are fairly mysterious, and the only thing we really know about them is that their leader's name is Chitka, and that they consume the souls of their victims. <laughs> It is said that Atlaknaka lives in caverns deep beneath Mount Vormithadra, which was once part of the ancient Arctic kingdom known as Hyperborea. Apparently there have been stories about the spider god also coming out of Siberia and Peru, but regardless of where it lives, it spends all of its time spinning a vast network of webs that connect our world to the dreamlands. Atlaknaka has the ability to possess and control statues in its likeness, and can be summoned by its cultists and sorcerers to do so. However, it really doesn't like to leave its weaving. Atlaknaka prefers really only to interact with sorcerers and has been known to make bargains in exchange for arcane knowledge and visions of other realms. I'm not sure what the spinner asks for in return, and I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Atlaknaka is thought to have had worshippers in the Andaman Islands, India, ancient Phoenicia, in the Eastern Mediterranean, and even members of the esoteric order of Dagon in Innsmouth, Massachusetts speak the like spider god's name in hushed tone. According to those cultists, Atlaknaka punishes those who refuse to interbreed with the Deep Ones. I'm not really sure why a dimension bridging spider god would be interested in the breeding habits of Deep Ones, but if someone knows, leave a comment because I'm genuinely curious and couldn't find any real elaboration on that tidbit. <laughs> Apparently in 1985, the Barton Doherty expedition set out wearing fiberglass armor to try to find the lair of Atlaknak in Peru. The thought behind the fiberglass was that they would be more difficult or painful to eat if they did find the Great Old One. A neat idea, I guess, but I'm not really sure if it worked. <laughs> Either Atlaknaka got them or the Andes got them because they were never heard from again. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope to see you next time here in the library.